Hi, cat. <laughs> Come and get some mango, baby. Self-awareness is a superpower. My name is Kathy LaDonna. Welcome to Soul and Vibration. I hope the free thinkers are doing well. And if you're not doing well, I'm happy to remind you that you are the most powerful person that you know. You are the most powerful person that you know because only you can create your reality. This video is about the second full moon that we're having in Capricorn. So the last full moon was in Capricorn and now we're having another full moon in Capricorn again. And when I did the, uh, the last Capricorn full moon video at the time, I honestly didn't even know that we were having um, one of two full moons. That, that was the first of you know two full moons because whenever I prepare my uh, schedule to do the videos, like I just focus on the month that I'm going to be working with. So, you know, because I was focused on the month, like I assumed that things were flowing like regular and, you know, it was a full moon in Capricorn and then we're moving on to another sign, but that's not the case. Like, you know, we had two full moons in the same sign back to back and I feel like that's some powerful energy. And what I thought was interesting about this energy was the simple fact that they both were on the 21st of the month. So we had one on June 21st and then one on July 21st. And also to what was interesting about this energy is like for the for the one on June 21st, I remember sitting outside doing some shadow work. And even though I was doing everything that I thought I could do, it felt like I didn't have a breakthrough moment. And I took that feeling of not breaking through as a to be continued. But I thought that was odd. It's like normally when I do my shadow works around full moons, I always have that breakthrough moment. It's like popping a pimple or, you know, popping a pimple or something like that. And all everything comes out opposed to you pop it, you squeeze some, some came out. And for whatever reason, you can't get to the rest. It's not ready yet. And that's how this energy felt. And then, you know, found out through the comments that we actually have a second full moon in Capricorn. And I thought this was wild. Like, I remember something like this happening um, with Aries energy. I remember having two Aries new moons back to back. But um, if you're someone who's aware of this um, and can remember the last time we had two full moons within the same zodiac sign back to back, let us know in the comments, like when was that? Um, when I try to look it up on Google, I didn't see a lot of information about it, but this is some powerful energy to me. The fact that we have two full moons back to back in the same sign. So this video is part one meaning in this video, I will go over the energies of the full moon and everything that I think you should know um, about this full moon and Capricorn. And then part two is a video located on Patreon where I go into the sun, moon and rising placements about this full moon. But the difference between this full moon video and the last one that I did we got cap we have saturn retrograde and saturn is the ruler of capricorn and we're in an eighth year which is also ruled by saturn energy so it just feels full circle when it comes to this energy and you know i'm gonna go into the five things that i would like for you to know that i would like to share with you about this full moon in capricorn the first thing that i want to share with you is the fact that this full moon is um 29 degrees where the first one I think was like at like the early degrees whether it was zero or one degree it was in the early degrees where this one is at 29 degrees and 29 degree is an intense degree 29 degrees is no joke and also too with this one the last one I remember for sure the energies in the day you know when you add up 
2024, the energies in the day added up and reduced to number eight vibration. And when you think of numerology, you're not at the end of the cycle until you get to the number nine, where the energies in, in this full moon adds up and reduce to number nine vibration. So that energy alone brings combination where when you think of the energies in the last full moon and everything adding up to the number eight vibration, the number eight energy, like being in an eighth year, is an energy for me that, yes, it deals with systems and cycles. It deals with time. Um, it's ruled by Saturn. But also, too, for me, with the number eight energy, when I think of the number eight, I always go back to, like, business. And within an eighth year or an eighth cycle, this is where you take a look at your business and you ask yourself, am I going to close this business soon or am I going to take it to the next level? And what is required for me to take it to the next level? And that same approach can be taken when it comes to any aspect of your life. So with the last full moon and the energies in the day adding up or reducing to the number eight vibration, this is where we're taking inventory of um, some aspect of our lives and trying to figure out how to take something to the next level or how to bring it to a complete ending. And an ending doesn't mean that that's it, we're done. An ending could mean, okay, you know, this is where we evolve to the next level. In order for something to evolve to the next level, it has to come to a complete end. Or you take it to an end and say, I'm done completely where this is concerned. So yes, with us being in an eighth year, 2024 adds up or due to number eight vibration, we are in a year collectively where we're looking at all aspects of our lives, mainly our finances, maybe our career goals, the way we provide for our thing ourselves, the way we create stability and security for ourselves, things that we've invested a lot of time and energy in. And we're asking ourselves, do I want to revisit this thing or do I want to invest more into this aspect of my life, this relationship, this job, this career? Um, myself and take this aspect of my life to the next level or is it time for me to walk away from this like this energy speaking about this energy um, in an eighth year would remind me of the eight of cups in the tarot and I'm going to I'm finding that number because the eight again deals with systems and cycles and in the card the eight of cups energy you can see the person walking away from the cups that are stacked up and the cups that are stacked up like they're stacked up in an organized way it's like this person is walking away from security they're walking away from stability and even with the person walking away with the stick in hand the walking stick it just brings me to you know something about age and time and the amount of time that was put into this thing so it's like you know walking away from something that means something to you and it probably means a lot to you because of seniority saturn energy deals with seniority familiarity so with us being in an eighth year collectively there's big emphasis around some aspects of our lives and do we take it to the next level or is it time to walk away you know july is the seventh month the number seven energy is an introspective energy it's a spiritual energy the number seven clashes with the number eight because the number seven seeks truth the number eight truths comes from uh what's been cycling through society that's the number eight's truth when you look at the infinity symbol and the whole cycling of systems and cycles that's the number eight's truth like that's what the number eight will consider a fact that's why the number eight is known as a concrete thinker but with july energy the number seven is like the truth has to come from within me the number seven is like the hermit it's like the sage it's like you know we go within ourselves to get the truth because the truth can only come from within. So the fact that this full moon is in July compared to the one that was in June, the one that was in June, June energy deals with family. June energy is a material, the number six is associated with June. And the number six deals with the material realm. It's just like the number eight, dealing with the material realm status and you know, what we've been told we're supposed to look, live up to and things like that, where the number seven and the full moon happening in July, the number seven is a rebel so much to the point that it could get paranoid, where the number seven is like, forget what everybody else is saying. I want to tune out the noise and go within. 
And I think it's perfect that this full moon is happening in July. And then the energy is out of our reduced to number nine vibration because it's like, I'm going to go inside myself to come to the truth that I need in order to put an end to this cycle or take something to the next level. So that's what's so powerful about the number seven energy and us being in July. And then the day is the 21st. The number two is nurturing. The number one energy is masculine action oriented energy. But two plus three is that childlike creative expressive energy. So in the process of us going within and coming to a realization about something, something is put to rest as we're also able to see some tangible outcome or a tangible new beginning pertaining to something else. So when it comes to these energies, the numbers within this um, full moon, there's introspection, there's release, but there's also confirmation. And the full moon is at 29 degrees. And that 29 degree is a powerful degree for the simple fact that it's, you know, the number two is nurturing again. The number nine is a humanity, humanitarian energy. Two plus nine is 11. The number 11 is a master, you know, it's a master number. And when you think about the number 11, the number one is repeated. And with the number one energy being repeated, it brings me to, you know, overload when it comes to thoughts. It brings me to major expressive energy, but that expressive energy could be dangerous if a person doesn't know how to work with that energy. So to me, the number 11 energy could be like a minefield. And again, the number 11 comes from the degree, 29 degree, two plus nine is 11. And the number 11 could be a minefield in the sense that it's going to set something off, whether it sets something off, you know, and that's it for something or something is evolved to the next level. But when it comes to the second thing that I want to share with you about this full moon is what happens when we have a full moon in Capricorn. A full moon is when the sun and the moon oppose each other at the exact degree. And this degree is 29 degrees. So we have the moon in, we have the moon in, um, in Aquarius and the sun in Cancer. And when it came to how we have like, you know, a second full moon in the same sign, to me, it came down to like, how slow the sun was moving and how fast the moon was moving to where it was able to lap around and you know and, and make that connection again so when it comes to say a full moon in capricorn and a full moon at 29 degree it's like major endings and the moon is in you know the moon is in capricorn so our inner world is in a space where we're nurtured by the thought of security we're nurtured by familiarity, but in this case, the full moon is sitting with Pluto, like a degree away from Pluto. So it brings a scorpionic aspect to this full moon. And what I love about Pluto entering into the picture, you know, Pluto energy deals with, um, it's like Pluto is a ruler of Scorpio along with Mars. And that Plutarian energy deals with, it's like a self-sustaining energy. Um, is it self-sustaining is not the word, but I guess that will work for now. Um, the right one will come to me soon. With Pluto conjunct the moon, Pluto conjunct the moon helps us to preserve ourselves, helps us to focus on ourselves, where instead moon and Capricorn will force us to focus on the traditions, the traditions, meaning everybody has been doing things this way for a long time, even though it doesn't make sense to me and it's outdated and, and, and it's just supporting say, you know, the people at the top of the, the, the pyramid or whatever, I'm going to keep doing it because it's all that I know where Pluto comes in and helps you self -pres preserve, self preserve. So with Pluto energy coming in, um, conjuncting the full moon, Pluto conjuncting the full moon shows you to put yourself first. Pluto energy shows you to take control of yourself and your situation. So Pluto conjunct the moon is like a person knowing how to properly nurture themselves. Pluto conjunct the moon is a person taking control of their inner world, taking control over their situation. So I think of like, say how we have Pluto 
transiting Capricorn in the past and that reflected like the great resignation energy where people started walking away from certain traditional fields and started doing their own thing, started trusting themselves. With Pluto conjunct the moon and Pluto in retrograde, that Pluto energy and, and Pluto is at zero degrees. Pluto is at zero degrees and, you know, Pluto, yeah, Pluto is at zero degrees in Aquarius, but it's conjuncting the moon. So it's like that energy right there is, you know, teaching a person how to be a rebel, how to choose themselves. So the difference between this full moon and the last one is like, I want to walk away from this and the next, but I don't know. And with this full moon, you know why something needs to come to an end. You know why. And of course, the full moon is when the sun and the moon are opposing each other and we have the sun in cancer. So it's like I, I identify a certain way and the way how I, I identify, you know, I like to keep a low profile, but at the same time, the thought of taking control of my life and being the boss of my reality, like that thought is nurturing me right now. And with Pluto conjunct the full moon, like is it like I'm seeing why that needs to be done. Pluto conjunct the moon, I'm seeing how the way I nurture myself needs to be transformed. Pluto conjunct the moon, I'm seeing how certain family dynamics and my household, the way I'm living, again, my inner world and psychology needs to be transformed. The third thing that I wanna share with you when it comes to this full moon energy is that this full moon can feel a little bit overwhelming. It could feel a bit exhausting for some people. It could even trigger depression in the sense that, say if someone is not the type of person that is used to like um, taking the wheel of their own life, this energy can feel so much as it feels like there's this pressure to be this authority within your own world and not feeling like you have what it takes to be the authority within your world when you do have what it takes to be the authority in your own world. But at the same time, it's like, you know, just self-doubt. So I feel like when it comes to this full moon energy, some of the challenges might be self-doubt. That might be a thing. Some of the challenges also when it comes to this full moon energy might be feelings of powerless that comes out. And those feelings of powerlessness that comes up around this full moon, though, are great things because they're going to trigger some shadow work. You know, I feel like this full moon energy, you know, brings me to the fourth thing that I want to share, and it's what's unexpected. This full moon energy for some might be a dark night of the soul experience. And for me, a dark night of the soul happens when you're ready to evolve from one space to the next. It's like being so accustomed to um, thinking a certain way or living a certain way. And then it comes to a point where your mind is accustomed to living a certain way, thinking a certain way and being a certain way because you've been conditioned to do that. But then the heart steps in and the heart starts to like direct you and direct you away from what you've been conditioned to feel and see as normal. And then there's a battle going on within you as there's a part of you that wants something, but there's a part of you that want to keep you where you are. And it's like it comes to a point where you feel confused. You don't know what to do. When you do know what to do, you're just afraid to do what needs to be done. So with the dark night of the soul, it's like the heart is pulling you away from what's familiar and fear of the unknown is keeping you stuck. So that's the unexpected when it comes to this full moon in Capricorn. And the fifth thing that I want to share with this full moon in Capricorn that didn't happen with the last one is the fact is the blessings. And for me, the blessings is Saturn in retrograde. And Saturn is the ruler of Capricorn, but Saturn isn't in retrograde just anywhere. I feel like Saturn is in retrograde in the most toughest place ever. And I say toughest place ever because this place is like the most powerful place, not more than every place is powerful in its own way. But Saturn is in retrograde in Pisces. And when I think of Pisces energy, Pisces 12th house Neptune energy is the space where we manifest from. You know, it's that whole saying, a dream is a blueprint to reality. Pisces, Neptune, 
12th house energy is where you go and dream that dream. And that dream is a seed that you're actually planting to materialize. But with Saturn energy there, sometimes we can, you know, delude ourselves with that dreamy Neptune Pisces 12th house energy to where we walk through life with rose colored glasses on and find ourselves keep bumping our heads when it comes to certain situations, depending on where Pisces is in your chart, what's in your 12th house and where, how, what Neptune is doing in your chart. So some people could find themselves like going through life and it's like one thing after the next. And, you know, some some people, you know, it's not natural for most people to take accountability. So instead, it would be easier to say, you know, this, that and them are the reason for these experiences that I've been having. But really with that Pisces energy is a matter of not seeing the environment for what it is, but instead coming to a conclusion of what it is based on what you think it should be, based on what you told it should be. And then when your reality don't match up with your expectations, it's like disappointment comes in because we're skipping steps. Where Saturn slows things down with that Pisces energy and forces us not to skip steps, forces us to see our encounters with others as they should be, force us to see our relationship with money as as it really is and not what we thought it was because the truth of your experience with a thing you can see it in your outcome because that pisces 12th house energy deals with the subconscious and the unconscious realm and you can't um you it, it's hard to see what's happening in your subconscious um unconscious life but you could see it based on your reality it's like the person that is trying to manifest abundance, but their reality is um, poverty. And because unconsciously, that's what's playing in the background. Where it's like a person might feel like, I just keep trying this, that, and the next, but I keep getting a fight, or these people got a hex on me, or this or that is happening. No, address the subconscious mind, and you can tell what's happening there based on your physical reality and the fruits that you keep bearing. The fruits that you keep bearing is a reflection of the soil. So with Saturn in retrograde, it helps to slow things down and we are seeing the truth of the soil that we're planting in. Saturn slows things down in Pisces to help us to also see that we can materialize our dreams. We can, we can monetize our goals and our dreams. You know, Saturn in Pisces is where, you know, the dream is not just a dream anymore. You can see how you can create some kind of a goal or a step-by-step -step plan to turn it into something major. You know, Saturn and Pisces retrograde energy is where, you know, a person may have had a hobby creating, I don't know, slime. And you love creating slime so much to where Saturn and Pisces show you how to create this slime business. And now you're a multimillionaire, billionaire, all because of your love for slime. Saturn had to come in there, slow things down, or a person, you know, with say strong Pisces and have that kind of an imaginary uh, vision for themselves, you know, have a strong Saturn aspect in their chart, um, speaking to that Pisces energy, slowing things down to help them to be able to see how they can materialize their dreams and their goals. And for those that don't have that, this is where transiting Saturn is doing that for us. So say for the person who struggled with relationships and connections for the longest, Saturn might um, help you to see how you've been showing up and relating with people for the longest and, you know, been inviting the wrong people into your life based on these visions opposed to how they've been showing up. You know, the person with Pisces, Neptune, um, or 12th house energy dealing with, um, say their finances, Saturn retrograde energy there will help a person see how, you know, they've been managing money or maybe self-worth issues that haven't been addressed that has been getting in the way in whatever it is that you say you want that you do deserve, but there's unconscious blocks that's getting in the way. So to me, with the Saturn retrograde energy, the blessing is that things are slowed down so much in a place where things are normally foggy and unclear. Things are so clear that we're able to see our truth and our truth is how we're perceiving certain things and how based on our perception of certain things, our perceptions are creating our reality because based on our perceptions, we're showing up and interacting with the world 
interacting with a certain aspect of our life in a certain way that keeps creating a certain outcome. So for me, yes, that's a blessing when it comes to this full moon in Capricorn. So overall, when it comes to this full moon in Capricorn, something comes to an end as far as your legacy, your goals. It's like the way you saw, you know, your ideal vision of yourself. If you've ever sat to vision who that is exactly, you know, what does the ideal vision of yourself look like? What does a day in the life of the ideal version of your life looks like? And say if you've never sit to do that before, like, you know, say you sit to do that now, you'll realize what your ideal vision of yourself looks like now and what it looked like, say, before, like in 2019, you'll notice that there's such a drastic difference. Or maybe you couldn't see it before, but you can see it now. But in order for you to be able to see it, you would have had to release certain baggage that you were carrying for the sake of carrying it because you thought it was your responsibility to carry it. Because Capricorn, like Saturn energy, deals with responsibility. And with Capricorn energy, this is where we allow others to tell us what we have the ability to respond to. And even though we see that we don't have the ability to respond to this thing, we still force it on ourselves. This is the person that's pursuing a certain career in college because it's their parents' dream, but they can't seem to get good grades or pass a class to save their life. And it's like with this full moon energy, Saturn energy slows things down and a person is able to see the truth. Like I'm struggling here because this is not what I even want for myself. I don't have the ability to respond to this. Why am I making this my responsibility when I've never had the ability to respond to this? That's why I've been looking like such a failure to me because I'm forcing myself to do something that isn't even aligned with my truth. And I don't even have the ability to respond to it. Where it's like someone who has the ability to respond to that thing can do it all day, every day and get energized from doing it because they're within their element. Where the person that's forcing themselves in something is depleting their energy, their life, their life force forcing something on themselves that you don't have the ability to respond to. So with this full moon energy, I feel like this full moon energy and Saturn and retrograde slows things down so much. It's where people are able to see the truth in their goals, their dreams, their visions, opposed to what society or your parents or your culture tells you that your goals, your dreams, and your reality should look like. So when it comes to this full moon energy, I feel like this is a powerful one because I feel like this will set the stage for the next, say, the next year in your life in the sense that within this full moon energy, when you reflect on the rest of 2024 and 2025, this is where you're going to start to figure out how you could get deeper into where it is that you belong, or how you could amp things up. So you could already be on the right path, but with this full moon energy and then also the retrograding aspect of the energy, you could already be on the right path, but there are certain blocks that you have based on mindsets that you're holding on to. And this energy helps you to address those beliefs, those mindsets that you've inherited and you're holding on to that's been stunting the growth of what you're doing and you think you're on the wrong path or you wonder why things aren't happening for you, but there was just a clog in the system and this full moon energy removes the guck and things are flowing now. And for some, you know, after this full moon energy and they're able to release themselves from certain things that may have energetically have a hold based on the mentality that, you know, one had about a thing and how they see themselves in the world relate to a thing or a way of thinking, you know, with all that release, a person might all of a sudden experience a major increase because we're in an eighth year and an eighth year deals with finances, with money. So for some people after this energy and the work that comes with this energy, they might really uh, experience a major increase because this energy here helped to get to the root of what have been blocking. So two things, one of two things can happen with this full moon energy. And I think that's why it was so powerful 
that we had these full moon energies back to back and in between them new moon and cancer um it's like an oreo cookie or like a sandwich the new moon and cancer in between these two full moon energies because with the new moon and cancer that happened i think july 5th you know new beginnings when it comes to how we're nurturing ourselves what we want when it comes to our homes and families and things like that but then when we complete the shadow work when it comes to say this capricorn energy not just what i want you know what do, what do where do i see myself where do i belong based on what nurtures me and what i want for me and not what society says that i should want for myself like once all the work is done or what's what needs to be addressed or owned with this energy i just see like major abundance for some people or set on the path of abundance and of course abundance is subjective what does abundance mean for you exactly i know for me abundant energy when i close my eyes and i come up with a definition based on what abundance feels for me feels like for me abundance feels like emotional and energetic satiation feels feels like being satiated emotionally and energetically so for me being satiated means that i'm full and i want nothing more. i'm full i'm satisfied it's like imagine eating a really good meal and you're full you're satisfied you don't you don't even want to see anything else you have you're good you're satisfied you're comfortable you're content you know to, to to want anything more would be to like just to be greedy just to want it from a place of fear you know what i mean but to be in an abundant energy for me is you know to be satisfied energetically and spiritually satisfied and i feel like when it comes to this full moon and capricorn energy it'll teach us some of us how to be abundant which is energetically and emotionally satisfied because no matter how much money we get how much notoriety we get if we don't already feel emotionally and spiritually energetically satisfied within ourselves abundance within ourselves nothing will give that to us and instead in some cases you could get more money and opportunity have more money than you've ever had but find yourself feeling more fearful and more anxious than you've ever had before because now this money feels like something that you might lose so now there is this major fear that you're dealing with because the abundance that can come from no one else or nothing else first needs to be built and that can only come from you you doing the work whatever the work looks like for you so i love this capricorn full moon energy and i love how saturn is putting us to work and the only work saturn is putting us to is just helping us to take off the rose colored glasses wherever pisces falls for you in your chart like what house is pisces in um is there any signs conjuncting saturn as it's transiting pisces in your um chart and where is neptune in your chart what's what what sign is on your your um 12th house cusp and if you don't have any signs on your 12th house cusp do a whole sign count you know count from your rising sign um all the way to whatever the 12th sign would be that would fall on your 12th house cusp and you'll see how you're starting to see things so much more clear in that area of your life and from seeing things so much more clear you're able to resolve yourself of responsibilities that you've put on yourself based on what society says responsibilities that you've put on yourself in the name of ego in the name of um looking like i'm doing something where my peers are concerned looking like i'm winning at life looking like i'm accomplishing things where my peers are concerned and saturn is helping us to be honest with ourselves and see the truth see the truth and then from being honest and seeing the truth then we can start to visualize and manifest what it is that we truly want or to me we clear the gook out of the flow and you know the our outer world starts to match the abundance that we feel on the inside and i feel like this energy here 
is clearing up the gook. It's like someone, you know, getting plumbing work done, but it's like energetic plumbing work getting done. If you choose to work the energy, it's like plumbing work getting done and the abundance, you know, you, you recognizing and owning abundance within because abundance is like happiness. It's a state of mind. It's a choice. And it's like owning that within. And then before you know it, it starts to show up in your world. Because when you own it within, you no longer even start to seek things that you used to seek. Because you realize that you're good and you've always been good and you'll always be good. You guys, it was such a pleasure sharing this message with you. This is part one of the full moon in Capricorn. Again, part two is available on Patreon. Hey guys, I want to share with you seven benefits of getting a numerology natal chart awareness coaching session. The first one is understanding your internal programming. The second one is becoming more clear about your purpose and passion. The third is setting goals for success. The fourth is awareness of strength and areas of improvement. And the fourth one was foundational for me because whenever you're aware of your weaknesses, no one can use them against you. And when you're aware of your strengths, that makes you unstoppable. And that is why I say self-awareness is a superpower. The fifth benefit is removing obstacles. We first have to become aware of a thing in order to remove it in the first place. The sixth benefit is understanding relationship dynamics. We don't have to change the people in our lives. We have to become aware of ourselves and start from there and everything changes. And the seventh benefit is upcoming transits. If that's something that you would like to look into because you're planning for something or you just want to be aware so if you're interested in booking a numerology natal chart awareness coaching session or learning more about it the link to book or the link to send me an email for questions are both within the description box below if you'd like to check out my patreon where i share exclusive content the link to check out what's happening on patreon is in the description box below Please let me know you're here with me by dropping me a yellow heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you and look forward to seeing you in the next video. Love yourself as if your life depended on it because it does. Take care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.